Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, I want to invite you to the very first video interview on my blog Shanghai City Girl. And I'm going to interview uh, Celia B, uh, successful fashion designer from Spain, uh, the winner of Shanghai 2014 Fashion Award, the best designer uh, of Time Out magazine. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Yeah, and, and City Weekend. And City <laughs> Weekend, all right. Yeah. So I have a few questions for you today. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for, for your time. You're welcome. Uh, so my first question is, when did you come to Shanghai and why? I came to Shanghai in uh, 2010, February 2010. And I came here because I had a, a job opportunity mm -hmm. with a local brand, it's called Asobio. All right. Mm -hmm. So was it a well deliberated um, decision or was it very spontaneous? Did you, when you, when you heard that you, that this job opportunity came up, did you think for a long time or did you just go? No, actually it was very spontaneous because mm -hmm. I already had one way ticket to Colombia. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I already made up my mind that I was going to go to South America, but they, they called me and they offered me this opportunity and I was like, wow, what can I do? So I asked them if they could wait for me six months, mm -hmm. I would take it and they agreed. So <laughs> that's, right. I did both things. I went to South America and I, and I came here. All right, yeah. great. So I have checked your background a little bit on your mm -hmm. website, celiab.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it uh, seems like you have been living in a few places before. Yeah. So um, how is living in China comparing to these other places? Is it more difficult or is it easier? Which mm. parts of the life here are maybe more difficult and which are easier? Uh, well, for me, almost everything is more difficult here. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like uh, starting for the language barrier, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't. I speak very, very bad Chinese, so that makes it very difficult. And also it's a totally different mentality, mm -hmm. different culture. Okay. So yeah, it's it's very difficult. But there are other things that are easier, mm -hmm. which is like, for example, starting your own company, oh, really? launching mm -hmm. your your uh, project, and mm -hmm. if you have ideas in a city that has the right energy, and uh, yeah, it's. It's a place where things can happen, and in that sense, it's easier than, for example, in Spain. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you said that uh, because of the culture and language, it's much more difficult. Mm -hmm. So, did you experience any culture shock? Do you remember any yeah. situation? Can you can you tell us? Oh, well, I I have it every day. Like, every day, uh, <laughs> still. Yes, 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 yes. Like, so, do you remember uh, anything, any specific situation? Mm. I don't know. I think I think it's just like very different. Everything is mm -hmm. like uh, since the moment you arrive and you realize that your your way of doing things are are not the same here, and, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things like I don't know when you start to look for a flat, when you go to buy things, when you go to the restaurant, mm -hmm. when you work with your colleagues, like everything is different. One moment, I just forgot that we actually have a microphone here <laughs> and it's because it's my very first interview. Ah. I'm very sorry. <laughs> so, uh, okay. But do you remember any specific situation, like maybe with some person involved, like some something very specific? I don't know right now <laughs> because I have like this every day, like mm -hmm. thousands. All right. So it's kind of hard to to think about like one specific thing that I was like shock. I think it's like that the shock uh, status of mine is with me every day all the time. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. you're still li like you are constantly living in this mode of culture shock. Yeah. All totally. the time. Yes. But is it completely. is it positive culture shock or negative? Mm, I don't think it's very positive. <laughs> <laughs> in a shock every day. Okay. Maybe it's more inspiring for you as an uh, artist. I think it pushes your boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it does. Like uh, it's very challenging and and uh, but. It's not easy. It's not easy and it takes a lot of energy. So it's kind of like, it's, 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 it's hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And my next question is that um, I still remember the very first day when I arrived in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. 
I remember the dates and the weather, I remember what I was doing. And how about you? Do you remember the very first day when you arrived here? What was it like? Yeah, yeah, I remember it totally. It was 20th of February of mm -hmm. 2010. And uh, I we landed, it was like maybe five or six, and it was already, it was super, super gray, mm -hmm. like with this haze. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and it was getting dark and it was just like you could see only the fog and maybe some lights in the in the landing in the airport and I thought am I going to get used to live with this sky okay. <laughs> always gray <laughs> with <laughs> that, that was my first thought like oh my god am I really am, am I going to get used and it was like already very late so I yeah I just took my suitcase and they drove me to my hotel all right yeah and it was I would and what did you do after? And it was not my first time to be here in, mm -hmm. in Shanghai. Like I knew the city already. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. So you? So, no, I just, just I just rested in the hotel because I wanted to go to to this very nice hotel where I used to stay before mm -hmm. with my previous company. But this company didn't want to pay for that hotel, so oh. we had like kind of like a big argument. And finally, they drove me to this hotel. <laughs> Okay. But the next day they wanted me to go to a creepy place they rented for me. So that's when, when my adventures here in China, fighting every day for everything started. <laughs> <laughs> Already before coming back, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned adventures regarding fighting. Do you remember the ultimately the most crazy adventure that you had in China or in Shanghai? We have a lot and uh, of a different <laughs> kinds like <laughs> like this adventure it's been very crazy and, mm -hmm. and fun and not fun sometimes and also like going out at night mm -hmm. it's like very like very crazy as well mm -hmm. and very surrealist the things that happen in okay. the city in the what night. What kind yeah. of surrealistic We are all like meeting people from all over the world and doing very silly things and mm -hmm. end up I don't know where. We were. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny, and and then like also like going to 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 visit factories in the middle of nowhere. I remember when I went to Ibu, that I was like very impressed of I don't know like all the crap that they have there and the amount of things that we buy in the developed countries. And okay. you know, it's like here you realize of a lot of things that. That we give for granted where we live, but actually here is in a different way, and and they are like made. I don't know. It's it's like it's it's, it's like your mind grows a lot because of mm -hmm. all this experience and all the things that you you will see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, do you remember the the first week now? What were your first uh, thoughts and first impressions after arri arriving in China? So the first week I was very energetic and very positive because I was just coming back from this trip that I made in South America. Mm -hmm. I was traveling in Colombia and Peru and Bolivia and I was like in this mood of discovery mm -hmm. and it was an adventure and I was like, I was feeling very, very positive and very strong and I, I, I was, yeah, I, w I was enjoying it a lot. Because I had like this mood of, come on, this is a new chapter, and it's great, and everything is different. And I was not really missing so much uh, my home. But I remember that my, when my mother came to visit me, she came home in April, when I opened the door and I saw her there, it was like two worlds <laughs> clashing together that until that time I didn't think about that. And immediately there I started to feel homesick and oh. sad. And yeah, it was that moment. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and do you feel that um, China changed you in any way? Because I do feel, for example, I became maybe more spontaneous. Mm. And how about you? How it changed you and has it influenced your designs in any way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, China changed me a lot. Um, I wish to think that for best, but I'm not that sure. Sometimes, yeah, I mean, I had a lot of freedom here. I enjoy a lot of freedom, and this inspired me a lot. It allowed me to become Celia B. It allowed me to create my own brand, to to make all these things. So I'm very grateful for that, and I think that it's it's great that it, it allowed me to to express all this that I had inside and really make it happen and make it real. Mm -hmm. But in another way, it makes me also quite impatient and. Uh, 
I became a little bit uh, annoyed, like very easily, mm -hmm. and and I can get angry and <laughs> and all these kind of things for like being like you that people don't understand you and don't get what you need and and this like fighting mood that that's that I think that is not very positive. So it has like two extremes, very extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and how about the designs? Do you feel like it changed your designs? Maybe has it influenced your designs in any way? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like my work is all about what I see and mm -hmm. what I I get inspiration from from everything around me, mm -hmm. and uh, I find amazing fabrics here and a lot of cool things in all the markets that I go in all mm -hmm. the factories and that totally influence my style and then in terms of the aesthetics I think that the fact that people here is like very free to dress more than in Europe mm -hmm. people take challenges in terms of colors and mm -hmm. patterns and, and shapes and that's also very cool and I think that the, it, it also gives me like the you know the strength to say yeah why not I can Let's do it. I mean, I've been always like that, but I know that in Europe and in the rest of the Western countries, it's like going to a very dark period. Mm -hmm. So I think that China is still a little bit away from that, and I love it. <laughs> so this is actually my my next question. Uh, well, you already mentioned something. So, do you think that European women or women in other countries, or mainly European, because you are European, mm -hmm. uh, could learn something from when it? in terms of style, from what you see in the streets of uh, Shanghai or in the streets uh, in China? What could they learn? I mean, you have to see it with different eyes. Like, okay. uh, you don't, you cannot see it with the, like, what's trendy mm -hmm. or, uh, like, like what is, is in the magazine. So, for example, today I bumped into this lady that it was the most stylish lady that I've seen in a long time, but she was, like, kind of like a an eye or a, or like not a homeless but she was like dressing whatever she had like like the socks on top of the pants and then on top of a skirt with flowers and then on top a, a sweater and then on top of a, like a, a, a scarf with a lot of colors but the whole look was like wow really cool amazing and there's this lady here in Nanjing Shiru that she's making these uh, uh, bracelets with the, with the jasmine with the flower oh, yes, I and know. And I love the way she dresses. She's like super cool and super modern, but of course she doesn't realize. It's like the accidental hipster, you know? So for that, I think it's very cool, but you need to see it with a different perspective and with different eyes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, is it possible to describe Shanghai in one word? And what would it be? But besides international, because mm -hmm. we all know, mm -hmm. we all say that international. Mm -hmm. What would be the one word to describe Shanghai? I would say eclectic, oh, okay. like this woman that I found in the street, like mixing all kind of things together. Cool. It's eclectic. It's a mix of different things, like tradition mm -hmm. and super modern. It's international because it has a people from a lot of mm -hmm. different places, and it has like a mix match of a lot of things. And that's something that inspires me a lot because my work is all about mash up and mix and match. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, could you come up or could you think of? three life lessons that you learned in China and that you might possibly take to your next destination with you? Because we all learn our life lessons here. What are, maybe if, um, or if you cannot come up with three, then what are some life lessons that you got uh, from your China experience? Okay, I have many lessons okay. actually, many, many, many. <laughs> One, I think it's like, if you want it, you can make it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important lesson. It's great. Uh, another lesson will be that things always come up. Mm -hmm. That that you think that you won, like you think you're in the middle of a big disaster, and then suddenly things fix themselves and they go. So it's like I'm still learning this of trusting and letting go. I mean, it's like a, a, le a lesson that I need to still to learn. I'm, right. I'm, in the, I'm in the process of learning. <laughs> and um, more life lessons. Uh, I think these two for me are the more important ones. Okay. I think that is like the, the, the really the, the knowledge that I'm going to take with me and to, to put it in whatever I do mm -hmm. after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you say after this so what will be your next destination after after china are you going to stay here for a while or 
is is there a next stop, next destination, or are we waiting for Celia B mm -hmm. out there? Well, there's a lot of destinations <laughs> okay. waiting for me. I'm traveling all the time. I'm looking for new places to 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 look for new ideas, mm -hmm. to meet people, to work, to collaborate. Right now, I have this project of uh, setting my design studio in Chiang Mai, in the north of Thailand. So oh. I will leave. I mean, this space will be here, and I will keep my business operation in China. It's still produced, it's here, but I will start producing in Chiang Mai and develop textiles. So I will be traveling between Shanghai and Chiang Mai on, mm -hmm. on and off. And um, then, in the future, I would love to go to South America. It's something that I have in my mind before coming here is where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And it's a destination that is waiting for me. I still don't know which country, but it will be the next chapter. I don't know when, but sometime. <laughs> All right, and my last question is, what advice would you give to a woman who wants to start a business in China? What would you warn her about? Oh, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe top three. <laughs> top three, like, okay, it's, it's hard, it's very hard, but mm -hmm. it, if you put the passion, it will happen eventually. Mm -hmm. And look for the right people to help you. Surround yourself with people that can help you because alone you cannot make it. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, the most important thing. True, true, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very You're much, welcome. Celia. It was Celia B for Shanghai City Girl, mm -hmm. and I wish you the best of luck thank with you so much. your future uh, travels mm -hmm. and projects. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Okay. Thank, thank you very you. much. You're welcome. So it took <laughs> shorter. Is it working?